Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2020 Formula 2 World Tour Championship season. So, uh, this is I believe the fourth round of the championship uh, in Vietnam at the Hanoi Circuit. Formula 2 cars uh, will be very interesting to drive around this one. Uh, I uh, have typically not gone along too well with this circuit but in Formula 2 cars it could be uh, a different story. So first up here we are for qualifying and uh, I've chosen to run uh, right at the end of the session and uh, surprise surprise we have come out right behind Matsushita and uh, this is actually going to be quite helpful for us uh, because uh, he was obviously a very decent driver so if we can keep up with him on our qualifying lap uh, that will really help uh, our uh, qualifying at pace it'll, it'll give me a good indication of uh, how how well the lap is going struggling a little bit through uh, the first uh, sector, but uh, if we can get the rest of the lap together, uh, it shouldn't be uh, too bad for us. And as we continue towards the end of the lap, you can see we are relatively close uh, to Matsushita. And as we come across the line, it's first position in qualifying pole position here in Vietnam, and uh, that is uh, a decent qualifying lap. Qualifying is complete, and we're all set for an exciting race tomorrow. Your top three are Correa, Ilot, and Nikita Mazepin. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the feature race tomorrow, so make sure you join us there. And uh, it was pole by just under a tenth of a second. So, uh, yeah, I uh, even had a look at uh, the sectors to see where we gained and lost time. And, uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, there is the uh, sectors for Mr. Shita. He actually didn't improve on his first sector either, but uh, anyway... Uh, that is uh, a good qualifying position for us. We get the four points for pole, so uh, nothing to complain about there. Let's just get into the race and uh, do the best job we can there. Let's get into it. Welcome to today's championship race, which is shaping up to be a real nail-biter. It's a circuit that combines the bespoke design of a traditional racetrack with the tight, close barriers of a street circuit that our drivers race today. 23 corners and a total distance of 3.4 miles. Watch out in particular for overtakes into the braking zone at turn 11. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's results with a look at the starting grid. Juan Manuel Correa lines up on pole position, and it's Callum Eilot in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Mazepin, Hubert, Nobuharu Machushita, and King, Joe, Aitken, Schumacher, Giuliano Alesi, Boccalacci, Latifi, Luca Giotto, and De Vries, Tete Camera, Delatrat, Galeo, and Tatiana Calderon. Boschon, Mahavir Raghunathan starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So here we are on the grid then for the feature race here in Vietnam and uh, normal strategy, the soft tyres to the mediums and uh, no rain to interfere. So let's just get ready to go to the five red lights. And away we go for the feature race here in Vietnam and it's a decent enough start for us, not as good as the cars around us but we should just about have enough. Uh, to hold the lead into the first corner, leave a bit of space on the inside for our teammate uh, who qualified alongside us. He gets his nose ahead briefly, uh, but we will uh, manage to maintain the position with the inside line here through this very uh, long and weird right-hander. And uh, we'll hold on uh, to that position. I lock with a bit of a run here as we have a bit of a loss of the back end. And uh, we had given him a little bit of a nudge, but uh, we hold on to the position. I lock though, still fighting uh, with us as we head down towards uh, the roundabout for the first time and uh, we manage to hold off Callum Eilat like well and uh, maintain the lead uh, for the time being uh, in this race so uh, let's uh, try and push away uh, while we can the DRS is so powerful uh, around this circuit because of just how long this back straight is so uh, even in the slipstream Eilat will have an advantage but uh, we do our best to stretch away and look at the speed he's gaining as we're trying to break the toe but there's not really anywhere to hide uh, along a straight and uh, we go way too deep into the hairpin and that's allowed Eilat through and uh, he has uh, taken the lead here in Vietnam and we're also going to lose second position to Nikita Mazepin 
as we go side by side we go up the inside into the next right hander and maintain that position ahead of the Russian but uh, here's a replay on board with Kalamilo at the start where we nudged him into the wall and uh, that was uh, light contact but actually did uh, a little bit of damage uh, to uh, the end of his front wing so uh, he had to back out of that fight with us there uh, as we headed into the roundabout section but uh, here's a replay as you can see us running wide there at the bottom of the screen uh, I he was easily able to get through and you can see from this angle uh, the damage to his front wing so he's going to be struggling uh, for uh, the rest of uh, this stint uh, until they can get that changed uh, at the front end of that car so uh, in light of that we get the move done uh, rather easily through the first couple of corners uh, where the uh, damage really starting to uh, show its effects there and uh, we're able to uh, get through uh, rather easily but uh, our lead will not last terribly long because as we continue on Hubert is making the move out of nowhere he's gained uh, a few positions on Mazepin and Eilat and uh, now made the move on us as we get really pinched into the apex there and uh, my, meanwhile uh, behind us uh, while that was happening uh, Eilat and Mazepin uh, battling away side by side uh, through the hairpin Eilat keeping the foot in though and trying to get to the inside for the next right hander he's still there as Mazepin locks up Eilat does uh, get back through even with the damaged front wing fighting hard but uh, as we continue on uh, it is Mazepin trying to make the move on us so we did eventually get uh, ahead of Callum Eilat as we head down into the roundabout uh, once again Mazepin not able to make the move we hold off the Russian uh, once again but uh, I imagine there will be a lot of this uh, throughout this race the DRS the slipstream uh, is so powerful and uh, onto neither of the two straights do we get a particularly good exit uh, they're both kind of awkward sections of track but uh, anyways we continue on uh, fighting with Nikita Mazepin uh, that is Masuchito getting involved now uh, as well as this flight uh, is really heating up uh, with more and more cars getting involved and I think that it is uh, Jordan King in the background as well as we go down the inside uh, goes Nikita Mazepin uh, on us but we will just about hold this one around the outside and we'll have the inside line for the next sharp uh, right hander and we'll hold the position there as we should uh, have the better line through the corner and we do just that but it's not going to last long because surprise surprise once again Mazepin uh, is on the right hand side uh, trying to make the move in a straight line with DRS there's no way we can defend from that we sit in slipstream to see if we get any kind of advantage down the outside we go as Mazepin is very harsh on the defense there and uh, very uh, far to the left hand side but we can't quite get the exit uh, that we need we'll see if we can get down the inside into the next right hander but I think we're too far back we're gonna go for it up the inside but we'll just about get a stop before we make contact uh, with Nikita Mazepin and uh, we will not quite uh, make that move but uh, as we continue uh, to fight on uh, through this race uh, around the outside we go and uh, we will get it done uh, that time but it won't last long because again Mazepin uh, cruises past in a straight line but this time we get the DRS they actually passed us before the detection point and that is going to be uh, curtains uh, for his chance of uh, getting into this next uh, section of the track uh, in the leaders we're able to get up the inside uh, quite easily and uh, make that move but a lot of us but on the exit we've spun into the wall light contact and is that did Mazepin hit us there on the exit or was that on the curb it was hard to tell uh, from our on board but no it was just on the curb Mazepin I thought Mazepin might have hit us uh, and tapped us around it's easy to do but no uh, that was our own fault spinning on the curb and uh, that has cost us a bunch of time and positions and uh, dropped us well uh, down the order. Here's the onboard from Matsushita. No, he has a big moment of his own and that is incredibly lucky for him uh, to still be in this race. He has damage uh, to his front wing and uh, the virtual safety car is out uh, for uh, that spin and uh, a lot of debris on the track. Uh, fragments of uh, Matsushita's front wing along the back straight and uh, a little chip out of the nose uh, of my own car. But uh, I decided not to pit under the virtual safety car and uh, that, that is because the uh, front wing uh, wasn't actually that badly damaged. The ending of that uh, virtual safety car, the timing, uh, was absolutely perfect. We were able to cruise past Mick Schumacher uh, as uh, we still had a lot of uh, green left uh, in our delta time uh, because we were stationary for so long. 
or uh, driving the wrong way in fact on the virtual safety car trying to spin the car around so uh, yeah that uh, worked out really well for us on the restart but Mick Schumacher isn't done with us as he cruises back past on the back straight down the inside we go though into the hairpin and we will uh, manage to hold off uh, Mick Schumacher and uh, now we can try and refocus uh, our attention back uh, to Nicholas Latifi uh, up ahead but uh, it is time for us to make our uh, one and only pit stop uh, in this race and we are not going to change the front wing I don't think uh, the time lost that that a little bit of damage you can see the nose uh, the uh, damage to the nose of the car but I don't think it's actually costing us too much time I don't feel like it uh, we can still be competitive with the cars around us so uh, I think we'll be okay and uh, we'll be able to go to the end on a normal strategy no front wing change I think that's just going to cost us too much time to do that it's going to be you know an extra six to eight seconds at least uh, to do that so uh, I'm not not going to uh, get that time back, I don't think. So, yeah, we're going to uh, just uh, run with uh, a slightly damaged uh, nose cone, but I think uh, that will be uh, okay uh, for the rest of this one as we exit pit lane. But uh, we've spun, though, on the exit, and we're parked on the racing line. We jam the car into the reverse and floor it, and we just about get out of the way before Matsushita comes through. And uh, that was very, very close to a major incident there on the racing line. Uh, through the first uh, couple of corners and uh, that was uh, very very close Machisito was actually having his own moment through there before uh, we uh, spun and uh, he was so lucky not to uh, make contact look at the front left corner of this how close he gets uh, to our own front wing there is nothing in it there uh, the speed he was going and uh, there from uh, the photo mode is just how close it got that is insane uh, for uh, both of us to be able to uh, avoid that incident but uh, as we continue on you see there uh, going to the right of Matsushita and uh, getting that move done uh, or is that Louis Deltras? Uh, it could be the other Carlin uh, it's hard to tell uh, but uh, anyway as we continue on then uh, we need to go on the charge and indeed we are as we get up the inside and uh, make the move on Nick De Vries there and uh, we are going to uh, be really pushing hard now uh, to get these positions back. Uh, I will correct myself, I do believe that Carlin uh, was Louis Delatraz. But uh, as we continue on then, uh, you can see uh, making more and more overtakes. That one uh, was on the Italian Luca Giotto in that uh, very vibrant uh, UNI Virtual OC car. And uh, now uh, as we begin to battle away uh, up ahead uh, with Giuliano Alessi and Sergio Sete Camera. Uh, we'll see if uh, we can make a move on either of these two as they are fighting uh, through uh, this uh, next section of the circuit. We go down the inside of Giuliano Alessi and uh, make the move on him nice and easily. And next up is Sergio Sete Camera. So as we continue on, we try to go uh, to the outside of Sete Camera as we head uh, down towards. Uh, the hairpin we get the move done before the corner and uh, get ahead of Sergio Sede Camera and I believe that puts us up into the top eight and onto reverse grid pole as Masuchita uh, makes his final stop so he's making an additional pit stop in this race because uh, he had to stop early uh, for that damage and couldn't make it to the end on his current set of medium tyres so uh, we'll see uh, what he does uh, in this one but uh, as we uh, have a look at that He's actually going on to another set of the medium compound, so uh, he is putting all of his eggs in uh, one basket and trying to get a result out of this race. That's a big risk, uh, given that you need those second mediums for the sprint race, but it might work out for him. We'll see as uh, we continue to follow on uh, with our race battling away, and we go down the inside of Lacey, but he manages to maintain that position uh, that he just took away from us, and uh, Lacey. Uh, holds on so uh, the Frenchman doing a good job and is currently on reverse grid pole but we're gonna go for it again down the inside into the hairpin and we will just about get a stopped turned and we will take that position back uh, from Giuliano Alessi and bring ourselves back up into that eighth position that we need but uh, the fights are not done with because now 
ZA Camera is battling away with a Lacey Delatraz and DeFries getting involved as well. But it's a Lacey who's trying to get ahead uh, of ZA Camera at the moment. Camera might be able to get the move done around the outside. He'll have the inside line for the next right hander as they head uh, towards the Suzuki like section. ZA Camera uh, gets ahead uh, from uh, a Lacey Delatraz. Uh, and then De Vries, uh fourth in uh, that queue. But uh, as we uh, make a big mistake, huge slide, only just avoid contact uh, with the wall. And now Alessi is charging past and he takes that eighth position and uh, he will be on reverse grid pole. But we managed to get him back around the outside and hold on to the position just about there. And uh, he wasn't able to make that. But another big loss at the back end for us. And Alessi down the inside into the final corners. It's so tight, there's no room there and he can't quite make the move but that was a good effort by Lacey uh, to try there but uh, yeah that was just never going to be the space but uh, somewhere where there is a lot of space is the back straight and he's cruising uh, as we don't have the DRS assistance uh, it just hurts you so badly uh, being the lead car you just have no straight line speed we went so deep in under brakes there uh, that we just missed the corner completely and Lacey uh, got through but uh, as we continue, we'll fight back up the inside as we head through the roundabout section. Bit of contact uh, on the exit. Alacy didn't really see us coming there as we head now uh, along the straight, sitting in the slipstream uh, of Alacy. We'll see if we can make a move on him, uh, heading uh, down towards a hairpin. We will, we will have the DRS this time, uh, unlike Alacy, but uh, I don't think he's going to get swamped. He's got a big gap down. Uh, to uh, the 10th position car so as we continue on down the inside of a lacy but again we're very late uh, on the brakes we run us both uh, run ourselves wide and said a camera gets through and said a camera out of nowhere is up into eighth position and as we continue on uh, we are going to try and make that same move that we made on lacy uh, once again up the inside of sergio set a camera and we get ahead of the brazilian uh, for now but he is very very quick off the exit uh, of that uh, right hander and he's going to try and make the move in a straight line we just about cover him off for now but when, once the DRS is open uh, he is going to be mighty quick so there it is around the outside he goes he'll have the inside line for the hairpin as Alacy is getting involved as well as we all head towards the hairpin we've got nowhere to go they're running side by side Delatra is trying to get involved as well nowhere for him to go either and we're really getting boxed in uh, behind the two uh, ahead of us uh, Lacey and Camera running side by side uh, towards the Suzuki like section uh, only with that barriers which makes it very difficult to run side by side but they're gonna try it as they head through a lot of respect given between them but they're gonna have to keep it up for a little bit longer and Lacey trying his best to keep the foot in and keep this fight going as he just about gets the nose ahead as they continue to fight this is incredible stuff from the two of these drivers to keep this fight going side by side for so long so the camera is going to have the inside for the next two corners that might be enough for him to get ahead and it is just about and set camera finally uh, wins out uh, in that battle and uh, set a camera uh, will take eighth position as we get down the inside of a lacy uh, once again uh, to take ninth and uh, we can once again try and focus on set camera but that was a great battle uh, between those two we're going to try this move once again up the inside of set camera through the roundabout section as we run side by side on the exit very difficult to get through there but we will just about uh, keep this fight going along the straight and we will uh, try and battle away uh, once again down towards the hairpin and hopefully we'll be able to find some space uh, this time unlike last time but again uh, Lacey is trying to get involved as well as Louis Delatraz but we will come out on top this time and uh, run a deep though once again a wheel spin for us on the exit bit of contact with those two and Lacey and camera have collided all three of us I think uh, all met in the middle as uh, we, one of the cars uh, understeered wide uh, behind us uh, I think it was uh, a Lacey uh, on the inside uh, understeered wide and uh, we were trying to cut in uh, towards the apex a bit but uh, that uh, caused a collision there between the two of them but uh, as we continue on uh, that is Antoine Hubert who crosses the line to win the feature race here and now as we head down towards the hairpin for the final time we got up the inside of Delatraz who made the move uh, earlier on but we're way too tight on the line and we are not able to make that position the Freaks gets past us as well it's still kicking off Delatraz is now on reverse grid pole as we head uh, down towards this uh, Suzuki like section for the last time up the inside of Nick DeFries and we will get that position back but it's not going to be enough for us 
to uh, chase down Louis Delatraz and he's going to hold on for 8th and it'll be ninth for us. And that is the hardest fought ninth position I think I've ever had. Dorian Boccalacci gets the driver of the day. And I have no idea what to say about that race. That was absolute chaos. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Arden today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? Although the Formula 2 car are all the same spec, the winner just looked better out there. It could have been a combination of getting those tires up to run the temperature faster and driving to the condition on track. They made it look easy out there today. And it's time now for the podium celebrations. And how well deserved is this one? This is a team all about giving talented young drivers an opportunity to race and to win. Arden are your winners here today. So it is Antoine Hubert who wins here in Vietnam for the feature race. It is Dorian Boccalacci in second position with Jordan King in third. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race for our championship leader. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? My driver of the day was Dorian Boccolacci. He did a cracking job of moving through the field. Just a very good race. On to the teams then. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Arden's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Oh my goodness, I do not know what to say about that race. First position, starting position, was our starting position. Ninth was our finishing position, uh, but uh, it was uh, absolute carnage. Uh, that got us there. Um, the spin uh, really wasn't uh, what we needed. Um, yeah, that's uh, really, I guess, what cost us this race and uh, dropped us the majority of those positions. We really didn't have great pace either, uh, to be honest. Um, so that uh, is something to work on for the next one, uh, for the sprint race. But yeah, I don't know. It uh, just didn't really uh, didn't really come to us in this one. Of course, we did a lot of the race with a damaged front wing, so. Uh, again, that would have affected uh, our pace, and uh, yeah, but we just couldn't ever break away from the, that group of cars behind us. Uh, uh, you know, Alacy, uh, Sede Camera, Delatraz, uh, Defries. Uh, we just couldn't break away from them, and that's what really cost us that uh, eighth position uh, in the end. Uh, I think, you know, we potentially we could have gone faster uh, than them, but. Just uh, in the DRS, uh, they're just so fast and it's just impossible to, to hold them off. So, uh, yeah, that was really unfortunate. And of course, eventually, uh, we had that contact as uh, we all kind of met in the middle uh, on uh, that next uh, little left hander after the hairpin, uh, where, uh, yeah, we were trying to uh, get back to the left. I didn't realize there were two cars uh, on my left. And uh, on top of that, Alacy was on the inside and he missed the apex uh, quite considerably. So, uh, yeah, it was a little bit 50-50 uh, uh, on that one, of course, Sede Camera was just uh, squeezed uh, into the middle and uh, of course the two of them uh, came off a bit worse uh, out of that one, unfortunately. Uh, Alacy, uh, we definitely with damage, Sede Camera uh, with a bit as well, I think, so uh, yeah, unfortunate for them, but uh, for us, it's a handful of points, uh, just two uh, for this race, so uh, let's hope for more in the sprint race. It looks like it could be a tense round of the championship here as we prepare to get today's race underway. As we await the start of another hugely anticipated Formula 2 race, I'm joined again by Davide Valsecchi. Davide, as a former GP2 champion, can we get some insight to what is running through these young drivers' heads as they sit out on the grid? Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. 
They are nervy moments. There is no doubts about that. Mental strength is the key to remain calm and focusing on the upcoming race. Formula 2 is so competitive and all of these drivers know that they are going to be pushing each other all of the way. In these sports, you have to be able to control your nerves. And now on to the grid for the sprint race here in Vietnam. Five red lights. And away we go for this sprint race here in Vietnam. No pit stops in this one. And it's a decent start for us as we head down towards the first corner. And there's not really uh, anywhere for us to go. So we're just going to try and hold our position. De Freeze is up the inside though. And has uh, overtaken us. He's going to try and get Dorian Boccalacci uh, as well as we try and fight away. Uh, with our, uh, one of our title rivals, Nobuharu Masashita, uh, on the left-hand side. We will uh, get ahead of him, but uh, not able to do anything about Dorian Boccalacci or Nick DeFries. Uh, up ahead, a bit of a uh, bad exit there, but we will eventually get up the inside of uh, Boccalacci uh, on the second lap of the race as we head into this uh, suzuka light section, and we will move ourselves up into ninth position. Only points for the top eight, so we need to try and break into those positions as we now get up the inside of Jack Aiken into the first corner and uh, make that move uh, relatively easily but uh, as we continue through uh, this right hander a huge slide as we were trying to put too much power down there and we are very lucky to be uh, to get away with that and uh, not to uh, end up in the barriers but uh, yeah that was uh, not what we needed uh, at this stage of the race and uh, we lose that position uh, to Jack Aitken and uh, almost one to Boccalacci but we managed to hold him off uh, for now but now Boccalacci to the right hand side and uh, it's now uh, a drag race along the back straight but we've been hit and we're sliding along the straight Sli somehow avoiding contact with the wall but not for long a hit to the right and the left and the front wing is off and Boccalacci is around as well and I think there's more cars involved back there we're going to need to see a replay of this and we've full on McLaughlin him into the wall uh, just like McLaughlin did to Lounge in the supercars finale of 2017 uh, we squeezed Boccalacci into the wall and uh, that is uh, not not a very nice thing to do uh, just didn't leave him the space there plain and simple we just about avoided contact for the first two sort of uh, swings to the right that the car kind of did there but the third one uh, there was contact with the wall and uh, it smashed the front wing off very lucky to still be in the race Boccalacci uh, not so lucky, here's the on board with Nobuharu Matsushita and uh, wow that was uh, a hard hit for him and uh, he was lucky to get away with that just with a bit of damage and uh, here's the on board with Sergio uh, sets a camera whack, oh that is a huge hit on the front end of that car both front wheels knocked off uh, of the Brazilian's car and that is a sad sight uh, to see uh, for him that car just uh, slowly grinding to a halt. He's trying to pull the power down to keep the car moving to get that out of the way, but yeah, that was a huge hit for Sergio Sede Camera and uh, two big hits for Nobuharu Matsushita. Somehow, uh, the Japanese driver still in the race. This time, we will, of course, change our front wing uh, because there's really nothing left of it. Um, and uh, we will put the soft compound tires on. I hope they will last for the rest of the race. Uh, because uh, they really are in the options. These are the tyres we used in qualifying because so I've done a couple of laps but nothing too much uh, and uh, I think they would just about be okay but uh, anyway as we look at the race director you can see uh, penalties for Matsushita and Galeo for collision with Boccalacci instead of camera as well as uh, Hubert and Eilot uh, having mechanical failures under safety cars so uh, that's an interesting one but uh, anyway we get underway uh, once again and uh, we need to make a charge through the field while our soft tyres are still uh, in a good condition so straight away we have a look up the inside but we can't really make a move on a lacy we're just not close enough so we're just going to have to wait until the roundabout we go up the inside and despite being quite late on the brakes we managed to make that move uh, with the extra grip uh, that we have uh, on this compound uh, next up is Mahavia Ragunathan we go up the inside from a long way back into the hairpin just about avoid the back of Luca Giotto and we make that move stick uh, on the Indian driver and move ourselves up uh, once again next up is the Italian Luca Giotto we go up the inside in a very weird place into the second to last corner but we make that move stick on the Italian and now we are up into 11th position in this race so inching closer to the points next up is the Canadian uh, Nicholas Latifi 
But uh, before you get uh, to that, here is uh, a fight going on behind us. Mahavir Ragunathan making the move around the outside of Luka Giotto, locking up, but around the outside he goes, and he's actually got the move done. Great stuff there, Mahavir Ragunathan. He's made an overtake. Great stuff. But uh, in the meantime, we go up the inside and get past Nicholas Latifi. And next up is Ralph Boschel, and we get up the inside of him into the roundabout section, absolutely sending it there and uh, getting the car stopped. Uh, to start turning left this uh, never ending Racing corner and uh, we are really catching Coldron at a rate of knots as we go up the inside no not going to make the move there and uh, we'll sit behind uh, for the time being we'll have a little sneak up the inside here though uh, through the next few corners and there it is a job done but a little bit wide a little bit deep there and that's going to compromise our exit. Calderon is going to get a good exit here as we go side by side up towards the roundabout section. Calderon with the DRS and she gets ahead uh, by the time we get into the braking zone. And uh, that is a job done for her. But we'll get a switch back here. Up the inside we go with our extra tyre grip. And we will get back through uh, on the Colombian and back up into 8th position in this race. So we are scoring one point currently. Uh, in this one three uh, actually because we do have the fastest lap uh, score next to our name so uh, that is good uh, that we have that in uh, the bank uh, no matter what so long as we finish in the top 10 we'll get those points but Boshong is through as well as we head along the back straight but uh, now we're really getting boxed in here as we don't have anywhere to go Latifi gets back through as well and uh, wow that was a bad corner for us as we were trying to take back 8th position we get back up the inside of Latifi but uh, yeah that is uh, really unfortunate uh, for us to uh, get boxed in like that as uh, Calderon and uh, Boshung were fighting away side by side up there and uh, we had a look at uh, that move on Latifi but uh, here we go uh, through uh, the final sector Calderon and Boshung having a mighty battle through this section really great stuff by them to keep the fight going side by side uh, throughout this entire final sector and uh, Calderon will have the inside of the final two corners and she will just about get ahead of the Swiss driver Ralph Boschum but can we make the most of that can we get a good exit out of this final corner and we may just be able to do a DRS open for us as we sit in the slipstream and we are, will not be making that pit stop but we will be making a move up the inside of Ralph Boschum very late on the brakes but for the second time uh, this weekend we'll make a move on the Tridents after uh, they uh, lost out in a battle uh, through the final sector. We'll also make a move on Calderon down into the first corner but we get pinched in quite a lot. Had to go up over the curb. Calderon holds on. She's fighting really well here as we try and get a switch back to the inside uh, once again like we did earlier but we just didn't have quite as much drive traction there. These softer uh, compound tyres starting to drop off now and uh, the pace uh, starting to equalise uh, a little bit with the cars around us so uh, that's uh, not particularly good for us uh, we need to try and keep the pace up as best we can and uh, try and uh, overtake Calderon and try and get away but uh, even if we do get this overtake done uh, you saw earlier she gets the DRS and flies straight back past so uh, it's going to be very tricky to make this move stick but we do get up the inside and make the overtake uh, once again and now we need to push and make sure we can get the gap out uh, by the time we get on to uh, this next straight but a little loss of the back end and there's lost, lost all the time we gained and now Calderon's going to go flying past no DRS required uh, at this point we sit in the slipstream though and that will help us regain some of that speed and we'll see uh, what we can do as we head down towards the hairpin once again sitting in the slipstream we're going to go for the move to outside inside no there was just not enough space uh, on either side there uh, for us to confidently make an overtake and Calderon holds on uh, once again but as we continue on we will have another look up the inside into the hairpin and we have to really get the car stopped uh, quite harshly there fishtailing on the exit and we lose uh, that position as well as another one so uh, yeah, this is really not great for us. We have to get back up the inside of Nicholas Latifi uh, through the roundabout. And we do just about do that. But uh, yeah, we're really struggling at this point uh, with uh, the traction out of that hairpin. And uh, when we make an overtake, we just can't get the power down as we now uh, go side by side with Nicholas Latifi along the back straight. Can we make a move on him uh, down into the hairpin? He has a lot of straight line speed with the DRS, but we go down the inside once again, but we've gone way too deep out on the exit curb, and we're not going to get any traction on that. Latifi holds on to the position. We'll see if we can make a move uh, into the next right-hander, and we will get up the inside from a long way back and make that move. 
uh, on Nicholas the TV. You can see how deep we had to go uh, in comparison to the Canadian. But uh, as we continue on up the inside of Bosham now into the first corner, and uh, we are uh, still at a slight grip advantage to these cars around us, but not by a lot. So uh, we need to make this move uh, on Calderon right now and uh, try and stretch away uh, from her and uh, this group of cars because uh, we're just not uh, in the same place we were a few laps ago uh, with uh, a sizable uh, advantage. It's only a very slight advantage now, uh, if any at all. So yeah, we really need to get a move on here and uh, make this overtake. But uh, that may not be happening anytime soon as we head uh, down into the hairpin on the penultimate lap. Very deep though. And that's going to allow Matsushita to get up alongside and make the move on us as we're struggling to uh, get mobile <laughs> once again after running so wide and going so slowly uh, on the exit there. As we go back up the inside though and retake that position as we head uh, towards the final lap uh, down into the roundabout section covering off uh, the overtake there and uh, make sure we hold position uh, through here but that may not be helpful because now he gets DRS as we head down towards the hairpin for the final time we get back up the inside as Majita defends uh, we will just about squeeze through we'll finally make that corner but again wheel spin on the exit and that's going to compromise our run but Majita himself did not get uh, a good run so I think we'll be able to hold him off here and uh, now it is going to be very difficult for him to overtake uh, in this uh, last uh, portion of the lap and uh, he has actually uh, dropped behind uh, Ralph Abosham so uh, we're not going to need to worry about him too much but uh, meanwhile uh, up ahead it has been a dominance race uh, for Mick Schumacher he crosses the line to win here in Vietnam Mick Schumacher wins the sprint race great drive by him and uh, he won by a uh, sizable margin so uh, decent work uh, by the uh, German as we come around the final corner, our front right tyre on 80% tyre wear, but it will just about hang in as we cross the line to finish ninth. And no points. Oh dear. It has not been a good weekend for us. It has not been a good weekend. Giuliano Alessi gets the driver of the day. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Bremer today. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? The safety car had a huge impact on the race today, that's for sure. A lot of racers begin panicking when it's brought into a race, as it means important decisions need to be made in a very short space of time. Should you pit? Well, that depends. What truck is it? How are the tires holding up? What is my current position? A race can be won or lost after the introduction of a safety car. Making quick thinking key to the victory here today. As we look back on a thrilling race here today, we can now see the drivers take their places on the podium. It's a familiar sight by now, as it's another successful F2 win for Prey. So it is Mick Schumacher who takes the race win today. Louis Delatraz finishes up in second position with Nikita Mazepin in third. Time to see how this result affects the driver's challenge. It was not the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage at the top has been reduced. And so, driver of the day then, Davide Valsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. We saw a dip in form from the championship leaders today. Their lead has taken a significant blow. Meanwhile, Prema have improved their position. A strong weekend for them as they fight their way to the top. That's it for today's race. From Davide and I, it's goodbye. And we'll see you when Formula 2 returns. So unfortunately I didn't show the uh, championship standings there. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they are. But we're still in a de decent position nonetheless. Uh, even though we had a pretty bad weekend. So uh, as long as we can keep things consistent in the next round I think we'll be uh, okay. Another street circuit up next, Singapore. So uh, I'm really looking forward to driving F2 cars around Singapore. It's a track I know uh, rather well. Um... It's always quite a long race there uh, in Formula 1, so you do sort of, uh, I guess, get to learn the track. And uh, it's one of uh, 
initially hated, uh, to be honest, uh, but uh, now I really love Singapore. It's one of my favourite rounds uh, on the calendar uh, in the F1 game. Oh, that's a big old crash there. But uh, yeah, I feel sorry for uh, Boccalacci in this one. He was just uh, trying to make an overtake and uh, had uh, an almighty crash uh, getting squeezed into the wall. Uh, as I said, so much like uh, Scott McLaughlin and Craig Lowndes. Uh, in the 2017 Supercars finale in Newcastle uh, where McLaughlin squeezed Lowndes into the wall and uh, that ended up being an uh, almighty crash as well but uh, yeah it was uh, a lot like that, uh, not like that incident but uh, no penalty for us on this occasion because reasons uh, I guess but uh, anyway other than that uh, there is uh, not a lot left to cover, like I said, unfortunately I don't have the championship standings after this one, but I think we're still in uh, a good position uh, to uh, maintain the lead uh, heading into uh, the uh, next round in Singapore, which, uh, as I said, really looking forward to that, but yeah, as for that race, uh, to cover that one off, uh, I think we did an alright job to recover, but at the end of the day, those soft tyres just couldn't go the distance, and uh, by the time we got to the end of the race, they just had no grip left to fight with especially the right front uh, it was dead so yeah it was sort of uh, yeah a bit of a struggle at the end but uh, anyway other than that thanks for watching I'll see you next time hope you enjoyed the video goodbye